Um, so I'm just very touched by uh, the, the words of uh, Brother Hamza that he just shared with us uh, in a, a very calm but an impactful way and words coming right from the heart and landing right onto our hearts. And I think when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran that Ya ayyuhan nas inna khalaqnakum min dhakarim wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uba wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi atqakum he said, O oh people, we have created you from a single male and a female, and we have made you into tribes and nations for you to understand each other. So I'm just going to stay with for you to understand each other. So usually we use this ayah to talk about the, the great difference when we talk about race. But I want to talk about when we talk about culture, how this applies to uh, culture. In many of the Eastern cultures now, when I say Eastern culture, I'm saying that with a very broad brush. I'm talking about Africa, I'm talking about the Middle East, I'm talking about uh, the uh, uh, Southeast Asia and probably uh, China and other places. It is not traditional for a man to show tears. And up to very recently, it was, it was just the same over here. That a man showing tears is actually a weakness. Uh, therefore, a man lives with headache and depression and just don't share it, because if you share it, like Brother Hamza said, they say, hey, sissy, you're a woman. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave men tears, but it's not for shedding, it's for suppression. Pretty much that's what they're telling us. So, to come out to say, I cried, is like you are less than a man. And depression, depression increases because of it. That is what I heard the brother say. He said, I knelt down and cried in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can all kneel down and cry, but we never share it. So that for me was a breaking of some cultural norms. Because the Prophet wasallam was known that when his son Ibrahim died, when his son Ibrahim died, whom he loved very much, who was from Maria to Kriptiya, he stood and his eyes were shedding tears. And that was in the only occasion. He shed tears in many occasions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said beautiful words. And it happened on Eid day. On Eid day. He said that the heart feels sad and the eyes shed tears. That is normal. Those are my words. Too much that's normal. He said, Wala illa ma yurdi Rabbana. We won't say anything except what pleases our Lord. Wa inna ya Ibrahim alayka la mahzunun. And we, myself and my family, we are sad for parting with you, Ibrahim. This is Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived for 23 years implementing this big Quran in his life. Lived as a father, lived as an orphan, lived as a, uh, a, a husband, uh, lost his children. He buried every single child of his own except Fatima whom he shared with that you will be the first of my family member that is going to follow me. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And her iman was at another level because 
somebody tells you, your father tells you, I'm dying and you go, you're going to die next and you smile. You know, you do it to the door, say something is wrong, take her to the psychiatrist. Because she doesn't get it. So, our deal is very comprehensive. And um, I was asking Sheikh Omar earlier when he gave his speech, I said, are you a counselor? Because I personally am longing for counselors. I'm longing for people like him and people like Brother Hamza who would help our youth come out and speak. It's a very big gap in our communities because our culture is really overshadowing, ever overshadowing our reality. And we're forcing the culture onto our reality. May Allah help us. It is very important. It is very important to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like Brother Hamza said, will never leave you alone. It is very important to reflect on the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is one surah I will advise all of us to read and there are so many things to take from today. And I'm going to try to end very swiftly, inshallah. That's Surah Al-Duha. Surah Al-Duha in, in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes talking to his Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as if it was a dialogue. But there is no dialogue in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by that time of the day. And then he is saying to his Prophet وسلم, that he has not left him or forsaken him or forgotten him. And then he is reminding him وسلم, at a time of sadness when the Prophet وسلم, was worried and anxious about this revolution that he had started to warm up to and all of a sudden it stopped and Khadija and all the confidence that she boosted into him are all starting to fizzle and he was a little bit afraid. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends this eye and telling him that no, your Lord has not left you. And everything that you are worried about, what would people say? He started pretending he is a prophet, now he is not. What is happening? They said, oh, your genie has left you. Your genie has gone back into the bottle, ya Muhammad. He said, the hereafter, it's better for you than this dunya. Don't worry about the dunya. He said, and Allah will give you, will provide for you so much that you'll be satisfied. It tells me to be satisfied is a very difficult thing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going back to Arabic said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and reminded him that the Prophet sallallahu went through hard times. He said, didn't Allah find you an orphan and gave you shelter? Didn't Allah find you an orphan and gave you shelter? Orphans usually are at the mercy of people who just deal with them the way they can. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him to the people who loved him. His grandfather loved him, his uncle loved him so much. Didn't Allah find you an orphan and gave you shelter? And found you lost because Rasulullah was looking for Allah all over the place, how to worship Allah, and guided you. And found you poor and made you rich. So some people argue that Rasulullah was into poor. 
he just did not keep wealth. Because anything he asked for, there is so many people around him that were ready to give him. Right? So that he was actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him that he enriched you when you were actually poor. So because of that, I'm going to ignore it this time. So because of that, when you see an orphan, be kind to them. When you see somebody who is asking, be kind to them. But the point I wanted to make is that if we go through things, so did Rasulullah, so did Musa alayhi salam, so did Isa alayhi salam, so did the messengers of Allah, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim, all of them. So here is one thing. Don't think too much about your past and your mistakes. Like Sheikh Omar said this morning, for they will forget, they will make you forget the thrive and the good things that happened. It will make you sad. And don't think too much about the future because it will make you scared. It's not, it's good to strategize and then work towards it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us khair in this dunya and akhirah. I thought um, I would respond to Fahad's call to make those few comments. I just like Mullah Khairah.